Okay, universe. I guess, having sat here for, what, 80 minutes now? Or more? Just listening to music and thinking? Currently enjoying the land down under men at work telling me to eat a Vegemite sandwich. He was six foot four and full of muscles. Ah, uh, that's enough of that. And love you, men at work, I think. I mean, really, I don't have much of an opinion about you. You're a lot like who? You're a lot like Tears for Fears. I uh, have some of your music and would listen to it regularly, but that's as far as we need to take it. Uh, pause. I obviously need to smoke some weed. Unpause. And unlike Men at Work, or sorry, no, Tears for Fears, I wonder if I... Uh, anyway, hey, Men at Work, where women go and men follow, I know that you are into the moment where you want to distort that lyric in 16 different ways, but why do you have to make it so uh, men will follow... I don't know. Uh, I'm going to stop criticizing Men at Work right now. I mean, I think I am, but I thought I was going to do that 30 seconds ago, and here I am again, so pause. Turn tables and a microphone. All right, unpause. Uh, clearly, my ongoing quarrel with the pause button has made no progress. I would say between losing my train of thought, never getting back to the point I was trying to make, and my audio troubles... The pause button issues are my least favorite of all. Because, frankly, it really is the, the touch area on the phone is uh, not properly calibrated. So hitting the pause button is tricky. And why I'm even explaining this for reasons that nobody cares about? Boy, this is two minutes and six seconds of shit I should just delete. I mean... <sighs> All right, let's let's at least explain that I'm in a really, really, really good mood. And I have been for a while, probably for a month and a half or two. Just as my undercurrent status quo, it's buoyant. And I guess I'm starting to reflect how buoyant it is based on having trouble finding more of the universe in the same buoyancy. And I've been around some peppy people and likable people and... Um, and driven and culturally aware and sensitive even, but not buoyant. I don't know where you go find that. I don't even know if it exists right now on planet Earth in America, <clears throat> because you're either on the take and thus loaded with guilt, or you're being taken advantage of and thus not prone to buoyancy. So... Zen little Buddha that I've become, where are the rest of the buoyants? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to find them. But I know finding them in the workplace is not going to be one place. Maybe that's what it is. <gasps> Maybe that's what it is. I'm so unencumbered by work, the fact that I don't have a job, I can be buoyant. Even though I am down to, I believe, three bucks, a little over three dollars. I mean, seriously. The financial situation, in most regards, could not get a grade higher than F-. minus. We are either working uh, next week at Home Depot, or we are working in the parking lot at Home Depot trying to climb on a truck to get 50 bucks for moving fucking shrubs and whatever else they want you to do. <clears throat> My point is, that doesn't wreck buoyancy. It can't. It, you're, if you're buoyant, you're buoyant because your entire take on life is correct. And what fallout comes with that just comes. And in my situation, unfortunately, it's financially hard to remain buoyant because going back to the Home Depot to take time so that I can have heat, food, and shelter for my cat and dog. Well, those are the things that strip you of your buoyancy. And I know it. And I know going into that scenario that all of my focus has to be on making it through eight-hour shifts and getting the fuck out of there without any friction whatsoever. 
It literally is an endurance test. And I made it 366 days last time. That was all I could endure. But I can at least endure until October-ish. Because I figure that's how long it'll take to get my finances at least ahead again. But if I hadn't taken these last three months off, I wouldn't have found my center so squarely again. And I know that Home Depot will try to rip it away from me. But they can't. They are what they are. They are a solution to a very simple problem in society, and that is you got to earn your way. And I 100% believe in that. I am not trying to shirk my responsibility as a citizen and a contributor to the overall economic engine that makes us all get going. It's important. Um, but so is pursuing something of value and purpose in your own life. And, well, that's where I've been for three months. And I've learned so much about myself, hell about my community. I mean, <laughs> I'm starting to tear up just thinking of the connections. Um, if anything, what I found is meaning. Um, there is meaning in the world. Uh, and I had, or <laughs> I personally go in and out of phases of understanding where to find that. And I know, uh, I know not where this emotional, I mean, I am about to seriously break down if I keep talking. And I don't know why. I didn't realize how important this had become. <laughs> hmm. Well, so, having it all get disrupted again, uh, well, I think I'm definitely stronger for it. I'm also thirsty, so let me get something to drink. I'll be right back. Unpause. Uh, okay. I'm... <laughs> I've taken about 90 seconds to walk to the kitchen and back, which is an extra 70 seconds and at least to uh, to make sure I can get my composure back. I'm I'm just now stable enough to speak again. So I don't I'm not really sure where all that emotional welling had been sitting. I I didn't know I'd trapped anything in regard to the comedians. I really didn't. In fact, I'm not even I'm I'm so unsure that's even the point here. I'm trying to quickly go through my my current situations. I mean, the finances are not bothering me, by the way, at all. That isn't it at all. Um, because when I when I speak of this, obviously, if an emergency situation occurred, I have resources I could go to. But I'm not in a position where that's of concern. <clears throat> so, I mean, I'm not even, uh, and, and this is how I live. Like, this doesn't stress me out in the least, although it would stress out almost every other single person. I get it. It doesn't stress me out at all. In fact, living this way is intentional, and I enjoy it. I, I find purpose in my lifestyle at the most meager level through what it strips me of wanting. <clears throat> Simple as that. So, committed to an aesthetic, meaning aesthetic, I might have said aesthetic, I do have a problem with mumbling and misspeaking, but even that doesn't really upset me because I am, well, I guess I don't like to misspeak. <laughs> that does upset me. Anyway, obviously I'm fucking high. I mean, that's clear. Um, I wonder if smoking, I wonder if sometimes there are we, and I'll tell you what, that's, that's funny because whatever that last mix of shit is there, I wonder... Marijuana can make you <coughs> weepy. And I really do mean weepy. There are weepy weeds for me. Where, oh, and yeah, of course, that's sweet watermelon sandia soda. Oh, yeah. I will listen back to that on a hot day and think, motherfucker, would I love one of those right now. But I'll be sitting somewhere in the sun playing golf or something going, oh, I wish the car girl would come around and why didn't they stop it? I only bring up that situation because my ex-roommate Patrick and I once got stranded out on a on a wasteland golf course without water because all the uh, water stations had been forgotten to be filled. So by the time the uh, staff got around to us and realized what was happening, 
we've been out there a few hours and we were fucking thirsty. So, uh, but you know, if you're going to talk about a story where you're thirsty and you're going to bring up playing golf as your paradigm of, can you care about me? Nobody should care about you whatsoever. I mean, that is as close to the moment of what happened down on the Titanic as I've come to in my life. Choosing a situation in which I'm putting myself in peril because I'm above it. I'm a white dude who's entitled. So what's the worst that can happen to me? I get a little thirsty. Fuck off, bitches. I'm going out there to play golf and I'm going to love it until it's too hot to fucking deal. And then I'm going to think, why did I do this to myself? But I wasn't in a submarine, so nothing imploded. I know it's not too early. In fact, the best thing about that circumstance is you could tell a joke pretty much as soon as it happened because they asked for it. Just like I can tell myself, you walk out into a desert area without any water. Well, what happens out there is your fault. You knew better. And <clears throat> I think in some ways, if you're not just... Hmm, I wonder, I actually wonder what motivated, because I think we stood on the tee thinking neither of us has water, which is, you know, I mean, there are only a couple of things in golf to concern yourself with. Am I wearing clothes? Do I have equipment? And am I going to be able to survive the round without dying? And if water is going to help any of that happen, not bringing it's dumb. So... Hmm. We could have walked in, too. But what are you going to do? Fuck, man. I think Patrick was, like, plus two. I'd probably shoot an 80 that day, but whatever. I mean, still, we were playing the dunes. I mean, you don't walk off the dunes. Too good a course. Um. So, yeah, most of my hardships in life have come through golf. Actually, that's not true, either, because I have really had no hardships in life, which is part of the reason that I can sit here... S simply enjoying my moments of choice. The idea that my soul arrived in a tranquil position, then got all fucking wound up like a hive of bees, and then slowly recomposed. <laughs> I was going to say recompiled, I was going to say composed, so recompile posed itself into some sort of hexagon natural structure of strength and reinforcement from within. How it did this, I don't know. I would share the secret sauce with the whole universe if I knew why I went from a helpless miscreant to a determined, giving, loving, tender, forgiving, understanding soul. Almost in spite of myself. I don't get to lean back on actions that worked out well for me and thus created a new framework in which to exist, nothing like that happened. I seriously think that I am so <clears throat> well tethered to a specific destination that there was kind of no fucking it up. I mean, I'm sure at this point I could fuck it all up, but... I don't know that I'm composed to fuck it up now. I don't know. This, These are still... I mean, whatever you're here to do isn't something you get to... to you're not in on. But there are signals and signs as to what is expected of you coming from everywhere, if you're listening. So, as <clears throat> you reconcile these notions, that's where you find destiny. And it's... Uh, I don't know. I, I, it's not something I ever... Pers <laughs> I thought life was just an organization of coincidental events enough that whatever meaning was extrapolated from the chaos was nothing but pattern, manipulation, or delusion in your own head. Because in the end, you just... There, the end of the universe is already pretty well established that it's going to dissolve into a darkness of nothingness. So whatever you think meaning has, 
how much sustenance is there left? Inevitably, it's all nothingness. And if you argue yourself back into the point of view that, well, maybe the whole physical take on reality is the mistake. Well, that's what the 20th century gave us. We are uniquely positioned to understand that it's not the material universe that matters, it's the conscious universe that matters. And then you're unboxed from all of the encumbrance that physical matter places in your reality's sense of context. None of that's relevant. You're here with purpose. It's your consciousness that's the miracle. It's not the universe. The universe is here to allow your consciousness to, to exist. The idea that we're existing in such a high-level form is shockingly unique. And we're fucking it up. To think that we're in a density of this linear time progression with this form and these capabilities to enact our will in a material universe, and what are we doing with it? Fighting over who should live in houses that are abandoned and who should sleep under bridges? <laughs> wow. Well, those are disappointing realities to find one immersed in, but here we sit, right? And I'm not a sayer of how to fix it. But I know that we're doing it wrong. So I figured the best thing to do is to start conversations with everybody you can find that has ideas about how to solve it. Or at least helps identify the problems in ways that you start to attack the actual core issue. Going to any sort of regulatory agency for help like I would have done for most of my life if a situation arises, well, to see how they have handled and mishandled and completely out of self-interest turn situations against the simple open dissemination of knowledge and information that the rest of us deserve, there is never a time you don't deserve the truth. Ever. Nobody can tell you that there is a reason to lie to you. Bullshit. No such thing. And somewhere in this reality, that got lost. <clears throat> I mean, if the government is literally going to pass laws that it's okay to propagandize their own people, those are signals that something's wrong. The stories are getting so obtuse they have to cover them up with bigger and bigger lies. And I gotta say, and how much do I hate even having to say this? That I think the whole alien thing is bullshit. I think it's all bullshit. I think they are setting us up for some sort of scam at the highest fucking level. Seriously. I hate saying that because the phenomenon that there may be some tangible life of recognitionable, recognizable. God, I can't even use my words when I talk about stuff this upsetting. My whole life I've wanted the universe to open up and say, we're not alone. It's, I think, if you could choose one time to live in as a human, that'd be the one. The time when the whole universe said, you're not alone, there are others. Isn't that the most important discovery there is? Doesn't that feel like the one that we all want the most? To know that we're not isolated in a void of darkness and solitude because this planet feels limited? Well, of course it does. Because you don't understand the nature of having come to Earth. You come to Earth because of the challenges. This place is designed to put you through the fucking test. You don't come to Earth because your soul has 
ultimate resilience in the face of all adversity. No. You are still triggered by everything. You are still capable of of murder. I don't think a single person listening here doesn't think in their head that if it came right down to it, in the right situation, with the right circumstances on the line, you could murder somebody. Now, it might be the kind of thing that happens in an instantaneous moment of regret. I find my wife blank, blank, blank. Okay, right? But it's that emotion. That's what you're here to, to experience. And that's why the whole turning men into fucking robots has been another big chink in the in the fight against male identity that now exists in crisis mode, in my opinion. Because your emotions save you from so much doubt that otherwise contaminates your system. Your emotions never lie to you. <laughs> they aren't there to, to fake shit. That's your entire... That's your universal experience speaking to you. Your emotions have this form in which to occur, but it's your soul speaking to you. It's it's how you're it's how you are being guided. Your emotions are the big are the biggest truth you have. I'll just put it that way. Whereas thoughts can be the biggest lies you tell yourself. And your emotions will do what they can to help you unthink the bad thoughts, but you have to let both coincide in ways that are are cooperative so your 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 emotional side can can keep your dumb thought side in check. And never did I understand this. No, I was I was the victim of all emotional suppression. And having finally released myself from doubting myself and my emotions. Well, now I understand how to coordinate a true human experience. And it's phenomenal. When I say I'm buoyant, it's because it's like I get to react to whatever I get to react to, but I always like the way I react. Like, I just, I like myself. I like hanging out and seeing what I do next. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's, I, I'm, I'm excited that this is what some of the chaos that I allowed myself to endure has finally transgressed into. Transgressed can't be right there. How about I just say, I, I hated myself long enough that knowing that I love myself makes life feel a whole lot more lo- worth living. And it's, it's, uh, it's never something that I'm unaware of these days. I know how lucky I am. And I know how lucky I am that even though I only have three bucks, my life will be fine. I'll pay my bills on time. Well, I might be 30 days late on my heat. But what I'm saying is I'll be caught up by October on everything in ahead. Like, I just know my life will work out. It just, it always does. So that living with that comfort is something that I've taken advantage of. And when I say taking advantage of, I mean, I've leaned into a little too much for sure. Um, but I, I also, you know... I, I came here with other uh, other limitations that now that I understand those, eh, maybe leaning into it was something that was preordained. So <clears throat> I'm, uh, and again, I, I, I also, I wonder if I could have found myself, could I have found my intent and my destiny at an earlier point in life? And I don't think I could have. And I, I, I have seen in many a dream the like area where life plans exist and one time i saw my own life plan and it's like and i knew what i was looking at too which is weird like i don't have very many lucid dreams that i'm very aware i'm gaining something i've wanted to know and i remember seeing a couple of the nodes on my life plan and thinking fuck who is that like i don't know what i mean i have some idea of conflict that's coming up in my life and i know it's going to be with some people that are that have been in my life and they will reemerge in my life. And I can't say that I know anything more than that. Cause I don't, 
but I know that's coming. And it's not just from that dream either. It's from a couple of other variables that have been voicing their intent in my, uh, in my current reality. So, and it may be my mother, to be honest, <laughs> it really might. So <clears throat> that's it. And I don't, I'm not rooting to have a big old brawl with my mother that changes both of us fundamentally, but it's going to be with somebody. And I don't think it's going to be with my sister. As a matter of fact, in my life plan, I remember thinking, coming back, thinking I need to get back in touch with my sister. She and I are parallel, but we're not in touch. And that's my fault. And look at that. Here we are, back in touch. Anyhow. Um, why am I... Jeez, I don't even... This is... God, I am stoned is what I am. Fucking hell. Pause. All right, I'm paused. And so here we are now 26 minutes into this thing. And I gotta say, that's enough granddaddy perps. We're gonna flip over to tangerine haze and Durban poison because, oh my God. I think when... I didn't know what weed was. I mean, what weed variety was. Granddaddy Purps was my favorite weed. I'm pretty sure. I mean, and it's not always grown with purple identification, which is one of its limitations to be identified in my past. But boy, is it the perfect stone. If you want to be stoned, Granddaddy Purps is it. You're not so fucking high you can't go do something right now, but you're high. You're really high. And if you let your mind get all spinning, well, then you can just spin off into all those tangential loops I was spinning off into myself. It is a wonderful eye. So, tangerine, uh, tangerine haze is probably one of my top ten favorite weeds. Durban poison is definitely. It might be number one or two. Um, but granddaddy perps for stoned, and by stoned I mean a little less motivated, but definitely also more mental. Um... In that framework, Granddaddy Perps. And another good one for that framework that I've got over here is Banana Kush. And I will just say, weed has different effects on everybody. It seems to. Either that or the varietals, as they are grown, produce different characteristics that are finitely enough of an influence person to person to give them uniquely different effects. So... Granddaddy Purps, for me, is the perfect stoner weed. For you, it might make you hyper. Hell, it might not have effect. It might make you sleep your ass off. It might do a number of things. So never, ever think that because you've heard what somebody else thinks with weed, you now know something. No. Experiment for yourself. You will never hurt yourself by experimenting. The worst that can do is you fall asleep. So if you're in a place where you can fall asleep and safely manage the idea that you might get hungry or a little bit uh, energetic... Uh, then you're fine. And trust yourself, because there's no reason not to. Don't trust other people when you can always trust yourself. It's fa in fact, in life, you're way better off just experiencing things and developing an opinion that's real than in any way framing it through anything you've seen or heard. And you will ultimately find yourself okay. There aren't as many risks out there as you think. The more you experiment, the more confidence you get, and the more nimble you become in the world. It's just as simple as that. And then once you're a self-realized creature, you never have to think about what other people are telling you because you already know what you know. That's enough. So that's uh, more stoner advice from the guy who smoked too much Granddaddy Perps and is now moving his way to Durban Poison because, fuck, we still got shit to do today. Can't just sit around and watch the seventh and eighth season of Game of Thrones. Mostly because I don't really remember what happened in seasons one through five. I watched season six, like, two months late, oh, and then I just quit. Do I want to go watch the whole thing again? But if I watch season seven and eight, I won't know what the fuck is going on. So, I think I just have to give up on Game of Thrones. I did read the first three books, or four. I didn't finish the book series either. Let's, so, much like the author himself, wasn't he George R.R. R. Martin? Why does that guy have two middle initials? What, what it... Is that his name? I'm feeling bad if it's not. But I think it is. Anyhow, didn't he, like, wasn't he writing while HBO was filming that thing? Like, it's not like he finished the thing. So, I feel like, much as the empath that I am, George R.R. R. Martin's work uh, kind of paused on me, too. So, 
trying to live true to myself, I think we should just let it stay paused. But does that mean I should delete that, like, 56 gigabytes of space that Game of Thrones takes up on my hard drive? I mean, if I'll never watch it again. Hmm. But always keep Deadwood, right? Because you never know when three seasons of Deadwood are going to feel good. That's almost the reason now that I think Deadwood might have done the right thing. I was so pissed when they didn't have season four. I'm like, what? What do you mean you're quitting? You can't quit. The writers didn't come up with any ideas to finish the fucking thing. Well, Loss could have done that. That would have been better off. But because Deadwood is three seasons of outstanding excellence, and I'll give the first four seasons of Breaking Bad, even the fifth season, sort of, but the four, the first four are fucking tight. And it, they could have ended it on the last scene of season four, and I think it'd be the greatest television of all time. But I think five extended it one beat too far. And only because four finished perfectly. Four finished perfectly. But whatever. Um, so back back to Deadwood. Okay, so it leaves you on a hiccup, but it's phenomenal. All of it. All of it. And the acting is as good as the writing. And with Lost, they had the great idea. They just... That's, that's what elevator pitches have done to fucking creativity. Great ideas turn into things that actually don't have much fucking real meat on the bone. They were just a great idea. But Deadwood, talk about meat on the bone. Well, <clears throat> why am I giving entertainment reviews? Have I even seen Deadwood in a 10-year period of time? I don't think so. So I remember it fondly, and it probably sucks, and nobody should watch it. There you go. Our review time is now over. Pause. I wonder, like, I'm really pretty high. I, I usually have a pretty good gauge on it when I check in to say, how high am I? I'm pretty fucking high. And I've only hit my vaporizer like four times. And maybe this because I've been laying off the vaporizer. Maybe this because I'm out of concentrate, and that's all. I'm smoking only plant, and I, I don't, like, I don't usually get this high. This is a, this is a, a bit of an interesting situation for me to be in because now I have to be concerned about all the shit I just said for 32 minutes and I don't remember any of it except I think I got weepy at one point and I know I was about to lose it so I mean you want to talk about mental masturbation well I think I just spooged all over you for about 32 minutes if you're listening so I apologize you should go get a towel and maybe we should start this over all right let me see if I can come up with one coherent thought to end it all with although I really should end this one with something like if you're high enough to listen to this, then maybe you too should stop smoking weed. No, I don't ever recommend that. I always encourage people to not just smoke, but smoke more and smoke more often. You can be stoned all day long if you want. I will always say, good for you. Pause. Okay, I'll pause. So I guess what I wanted to speak to is the frame of disappointment that still sits all over me. Whenever I wander into the picture of 50 random men, 50 random women, now start interacting online and see what happens. And it turns into 46 women going after four boys, ignoring the other 46 boys. And of those 46 women, the four boys they give their attention to, well, they fuck them all. Because they're men. I mean, jeez. Hello. And the 46 that sit on the sideline, well, what should they do? Um, I don't know. I really don't. Like, I get how guys like Andrew Tate make you all feel like it's your fault that you're not fucking... Bitch slaving as many bitches as you want. Get your shit in shape. Get your fucking mind honed and become the razor edge gladiator that you are. Well, okay. I mean, I even think that probably works for about 20% of you. If you're willing to commit to that fucking shit, dude. It's a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Especially in a lazy ass country like America. But you can stand out by standing out. Okay, there's tip number one. You want to stand out? Make yourself stand out. Do it any way you want. Fuck, go be a mime on the fucking street. You'll stand out. People will notice you. 
Will you get the attention you want? I don't know. Who are you? Who are you that feels dissatisfied with your life? You're somebody who, what, doesn't know what to do? Blames it on other people? Knows why it's happening and fucking lives in your own pile of misery? Has no other options, so deals with it the best they can? Has fucking given up and doesn't give a shit anymore? It's, it's part of the human condition to face yourself and your own malaise in a way that you overcome it. Being mm, regulated, as it were, through societal roles and responsibilities can lead to a decade of time that you can't remember what the fuck you did. It's all the fucking same. And that is your fault. Always. I've done it. I'm not being a hypocrite. I mean, fuck. I've given up at least a decade, maybe two, to just sidewinding nonsense. Or not asking myself, could it be better? Could I be doing more for my own reality? Could I improve the situation that I'm in to the point that I start to see my own potential raise and then aspire to even greater heights and all of a sudden now have the kind of self-love I never even knew I was missing. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, there are avenues for that. But you got to be willing to take yourself to task, right? you got to be willing to say that this is my fault. That something here about me needs to act differently, behave more tightly in this way, stop doing this, reinforce this. I don't know. And like I said, this is this is self self analysis and real deep deciding of who you are, what you need, and how life can be the most fulfilling to you. Might face down some fucking serious shit about yourself that you gotta fucking fix. <laughs> I was a prolific liar. You want an unhealthy life? Lie to people. Lie to them, face forward, bald faced lies. Give it to them. And then let that all unwind. Or live inside of truth all the time. Absolute. Commit to it. Decide, I don't want to live any other way. And live that way. Five, six, seven years later, all of a sudden you don't even know how to tell lies. You're a completely different person. Now, fortunately, I didn't even have to try to do that work because every time I tried to do that work, I failed at it and ended up lying again. I just, again, for whatever reason, got a software system update seven, six, ten years ago. Who knows now? But it was long enough ago that the person I am now knows I'm V2.0. I've emerged as something different. My parents know it. My friends see it. Everyone knows it. And... Uh, I would never think of being the situational, um, hmm, value negative that I was to the universe whenever I opened my mouth and told something untrue. It just, it, it doesn't exist now. It, it is truly hard to resonate back and forth with my past that way. I don't understand myself. But I also don't neglect the accountability of my of any of my past behavior because nothing in your past is real. Not anymore. Except what it leaves is some sort of taint on your future opportunities to do something different. But of course it existing doesn't make it go away. So you do deal with it. Just don't live by it, ever. The exact time you have to change something about yourself for the better is exactly this one. And guess what? You don't just get to change it. You get to change and maintain it. But if you don't change and maintain it, then you don't build a new you. You just try on some fucking new shirt for a day. Bullshit. Understand that. Fundamentally changing something about yourself means deciding to be different. 
I am no longer going to be somebody who doesn't show up late. Well, that's not me, but that's my dad. He fundamentally changed that about himself. I don't know, four, ten years ago himself. Honestly, he is on time like a Cracker Jack now. Almost to the to the second. It's bizarre. He can show up on the minute to the randomest of shit. But he does it because it's important to him. And because of that, I'm always appreciative of the fact that I know I can depend on him in that way. And he doesn't depend on me that way. Fuck, I don't reciprocate shit. I'm like, he's, he makes a plan for 845. I'm like, 847, 89 or so to make my point. Don't be pissed at me when I'm seven minutes late. But I'll be here, I guarantee you, seven minutes or less. Just, I'm not on the dot like you. I live a little more on island time. I like to see the sun in a certain position. Then I know what time it is. Then I come. Or whatever. <laughs> All right. I, I can't make excuses for what is otherwise a behavioral uh, transgression against the rest of you. Yes, I don't like being casually late. And I have gotten to the point where at least I'm not really late. I'm working on it. I'm getting better. And this is an area where I certainly see that I can improve. But if I all of a sudden am on time to everything, my life doesn't improve inside my soul. Or does it? Hmm. No, because, fuck man, I'm just too spaced out. And then not because I'm high. Well, okay, you could argue that. But I would argue that it's not that. Because even in my sobriety moments and months and whatever breaks I've taken in life, I'm still very scattered. I think about too many things simultaneously. And because of that, whenever I leave the house, I always have to go back in and find something I forgot. I'm never dedicated to the task of getting my way out the door to the point that I'm pre-planned and ready to go. So I'm always kind of scrambling in the moment. And then I'm always kind of late because I forgot something. And then uh, I'm just four minutes late. Hell, I'm not even late. We said between 8.45 and 9, right? Okay, maybe not. Um... But in terms of my integrity, in terms of the kindness, forgiveness, forgiveness, the understanding nature of who I am on the tennis court now, especially when I have to play with my dad, which can be quite, quite the challenge to your uh, peripheral uh, awareness. He's not exactly uh, a great guy to play tennis with, as evidenced by the fact that he has pretty much only me to play with now in a sea full of other people who like to play tennis with me, but not my dad. But if you're listening, dad, anytime you want to have this conversation, I'm ready. Um, about why you're a dick on the tennis court, but you won't listen. So I just continue to play with you in your capacity to be a dick and know that this is the one thing that we do have together. We really enjoy playing tennis against each other. Because we're pretty evenly matched. And at this point, I'm better than my dad. Undoubtedly. But I can play with my dad at a level that I really enjoy. And I and he wins enough. He beat my ass today, 7-4. to four. Fucking A. And he did. He beat my ass today. Fuck, man. But I still had a great time. And I always will. So, will I ever expect him to change things about himself so my life's better on the tennis court? No, because when my life's better on the tennis court with other people, I get plenty of fulfillment from it. And I never want to stop playing tennis with my dad. And if he dies on the tennis court with me, I've already told him. I think he'll probably go out, uh, I wouldn't say as happy as possible, because I'll be standing over him going, I don't know what to do, dude. Sorry. See you in the afterlife. But he will have just collapsed on the tennis court, where at least I know he finds fulfillment. Uh, I'd say it's better than stumbling off the roof, right? I'm not going to end this one with right. In fact, I'm going to end this one with, I'm pretty high. So, you decide.